Right, welcome back to NZ Mopo Customs. So, we've got something new in the shed at the moment. So the little yellow bomb is still here, the marina. Um, it's basically ready to go. I'm just gonna put the hubcap back on, give it a final wipe down, wipe over, you know, cup, couple of to the vapes and I'm gonna let the landy know. Um, probably do that in the morning at this point. I just wanna have a look, good look over this other vehicle that's here. So this is what we got here. It's a 1980s, late, early 80s. They had a different front, um, the earlier ones. Um, this is a Bedford van. So it's, I would say it's, it's a similar thing to um, Chev, Dodge, Ford van of the era. Um, but it's just got a little, I think, 2.3 slant 4. Um, a lot of them re re were repaired here in New Zealand and Australia and whatever. But yeah, this has still got the original motor on it. Seems to run okay, but I think the owner's going to pull it out um, at some point. But basically, this is, we're going to, uh, I wouldn't say strip it down, we're going to knock it down. Obviously, we're going to fix a few marks and dents and whatever. Fill a lot of these holes. Get rid of this thing that's been added. Just go over it, um, you know, fix this sort of stuff, get rid of this. We're going to fill these rear windows and then cut new holes for these sliding, slightly slanted windows. They're actually close to the right size, but they're a bit low. And they'll probably cut back into here and maybe up to here somewhere. I don't know. We'll work that out when we get there. Um, just knock a few dents out, give it a really good scuff down. We've got a bit of do, bit to do on the roof. Um, obviously, you could do the same on the other side. Um, fix, like again, fix these. It's you know, a bit of rot around the bottom of where the windows have been in. So, we've got to fix that plus blank them off and then recut. And this, is, this will just get repaired and get rid of that shit out of the road. Now we've got a wee bit of funny stuff going on here. So, we have to dig this off, clean that off, whatever, have a look. It's had something going on there. But yeah, just in area, a good scuff down, clean down, and uh, just prep it for paint. It'll be repainted at some some point. But it's also got um, here. So it's got that vent in the roof. Once it's gone, it's had the same sort of thing up here. It's had some pits just boogered over top. That's going to be fixed. So we'll fix that. Somebody stood on the roof at some point and this is all bent down. So we're going to push that back up and fix that. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure it's decent. Um, and then, just quickly show you the roof. You can sort of see that it's a bit low in the centre here, so it needs lifted up. This is this patch here. So we'll just cut that out and fix it. Um, you know, obviously have to go have a good look around the gutters and work to clean the roof off and whatever. Give it a bloody good clean. And I just, you know, fix a few of these bits and pieces and just get it prepped for paint, really. So we'll just strip, you know, plates, lights, bumper corners off and whatever. Just get the worst of the shit out of the road that doesn't need to be there. Um, if the door handles are easy enough to get off, we'll do that and all sorts of bits and pieces like that, so... Yeah, we'll just see how we get on. Right, so this is that one piece that's on the roof. Well, this is just leaned over here. I'm sure there's a, it's not a gross over somewhere. There's a couple of other patches. <laughs> Another roof over here, here, I don't know, and this one here. Like that just, oh, I don't know what that was meant to be holding on with. Hopes and dreams by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, we'll fix, we'll fix those obviously when we're up here too. Um, actually just having a quick look at the gutters. It actually looks pretty freaking solid this thing. Right, it needs a clean um, and whatever. But yeah, I think we just run around with a wire wheel for the bulk of it once we so we get to that point and uh, possibly just reseam seal if, if needed where it needs to be. And obviously we've got the other patch back here as well that need to fix. And then just do the couple of bits of straightening on the roof 
where they got that other big ugly freaking patch there that you can see. Well, hopefully, you can see that. It's a piece off to move the. I want to take that off and or weld a patch in there properly. Um, so you'll get. What I'll do is I'll just crank up. I'll just put a cutting disc on the grinder and I'll just go around and we'll just cut these screws off. Just nick them off, cut them off, whatever, and we'll just throw this out of the road and then I'll just screw them out with a pair of vice grips or something. Um, yeah, because I'll probably end up having to cut a bit further out here anyway to get rid of the holes and shit, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then I'll worry about those ones later, but we'll just we'll get this off out of the road anyway. See if we can get this patch off. I think what I'm going to do here See what's going on. But yeah, I don't know whether we should fucking cut it way out here or not. We'll just try and put some patches in here and zap up all these fucking holes. Right, so I got the van to fire up. Um, we've given it a good pressure wash off. Um, obviously, it's just a bit of junk freaking flying off the roof. It, it really is. It really is a really it's a good scruff. It's, a lot of the paint is actually floating off in parts of the roof. 
Um, it's actually got quite a few dents up here. I actually, hopefully I can maybe, um, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe borrow or get somebody in on the inside. It's like a two person job and you can see I might better tap up the pieces and like planish it from one or one side or the other if you know what I mean so I can get a lot of the bits where it's been pushed down or stepped on to um, sit right um, where it's, yeah, you, can, you can see the pressure marks um, now that's clean watch actually uh, now I'll leave I'll just blow it off well, all that'll come off later on once it's dry that's what's inside a quick fucking hose out too um, just open the side door Get in here a bit better and just blow this out. Blow that junk out of there. And um, yeah, and we'll go from there. Basically, just I wanted to just get the nose out. So I pulled that um jump box apart. I just took the, the leads direct to the. It's actually like, I don't know, it's like two motorcycle batteries type sort of thing. And well, they must be like dry cell. I don't, I'm not sure whether the. I don't think they're lithium. But they're dry, dry cell type batteries. So I just took the frickin' jump leads to them. <laughs> so that fired it up. Um, and I'll just, I'll just leave the little trickle charger on the batteries and also juice. Well, at least keep that one topped up anyway. You might just give that another wee blow out there. We'll crank it up again. Just give it another hose out in that corner. Get the junk out of it because there is a wee bit of rot in there. And it's possibly a bit of rot down in there too. I'm not 100% sure. We'll, we'll dig it out and clean it out and whatever. <laughs> Make sure it's solid. But yeah, oh, there's lots of pressure marks. You can see the pressure marks from the inside on the roof. So maybe I can hold one of my spoons on the out on the outside, and then I can come in from the inside with some beer muffs on or, or whatever. And see if we can tap those pieces back up, and obviously straighten that bar in the middle, push that back up if it's meant to be pushed up. I don't know. I don't know if it's meant to be pushed up or not. It possibly, but anyway, get it sort of sorted out, um, get the roof straightened up and, and patch those patches on the roof, yeah, and then we'll go from the rest from here, um, but I'll pull it inside now, and uh, let it drip dry, and um, yeah, and then I'll we'll blow it down after lunch or whatever like that, and we'll start dealing to some of the issues. And, uh, go from here. Pain in the ass trying to back it out with that mirrors. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we'll get it inside now. We'll carry on taking some bits off and whatever. And, and then, yeah, when my ride comes back to pick, pick me up, um, yeah, well, yeah, you can see there's another dent there in the roof, just above the door. So, in there. so yeah, we'll, we'll try and straighten all those out the best we can getting back up into reasonable sort of shape so it's not um if it's not 100 percent dead perfect it's not gonna matter but as long as it's not really doesn't stick out too much you know we'll get it reasonable get it pretty reasonable say you know from from down here or whatever you know if we have to put a wee smear of mud just to um just to pretty things up a little bit but yeah you know, that doesn't matter too much but we're not gonna have to do it anyway one long, long time we've done some patches in the roof but those pieces where it's pushed down will come we'll, bang them up and get it pretty close and we'll just we scooch your mud and obviously we're gonna have to tear the shit out of the paint but yeah might have to get another box of uh 60s or even 40s put them at DA and uh fucking really tear it up and get a lot of that paint ripped down and I'll, yeah I'll, I'll, I think I'll probably have to do that because the pressure washer was lifting the paint off especially here this primer I think we'll have to dig in there and see what's going on here because it just hasn't stuck so it mightn't hurt to just get all the this primer off it's never been prepped properly unfortunately yeah yeah it's coming off here too well i don't know if it's coming off here but we might just have to da the crap out of all this and just get it right back fairly good there's nothing too much too bodgy in here but I'll just have to deal with it too right I'm not gonna dig too hard yeah we'll fix the obvious it's pretty clean it is pretty clean but this stuff needs to be 
rip back and just tidy it up. It's it hasn't been it hasn't been prepped properly, if you know what I mean. You're better off to rip it back with a bit of freaking 40 and 80, and yeah, maybe even a bit of 120, and then blow it. that freaking Roblo high build will, will cover freaking most things, if you know what I mean. Um, a few good coats of that on it, and um, block it out with a bit of 220, and um, yeah, you never know you will be there, but yeah. It's pretty straight old girl, which is handy. Saves a lot of freaking work in the sides, you know, apart from a few marks and whatever. But it's got a few dents and stuff in here. But we can we can tap that now. Just have to have a good good rub over it now. That's clean-ish. And uh yeah, we'll start working out what we've what we've fixed and what we haven't. You know, we'll DA this pretty hard, just to make sure there's nothing too weird going on underneath there, but but most of it looks like it's fairly original original-ish paint it's been on there for a while anyway so it's cool we'll get it back inside right so welcome back so it's quite a lot of dents in this roof it's actually quite rough across the back too it's obviously been stood on at some point and it's taken all the guts out of it like it's got a, a hard bend down here um, so what I'm going to do for a start off I think Let's go along these these main ribs and just feel which ones have got bends and buckles in them where they've been pushed down. And I'm going to try and use trolley jack. I was going to go in the room and my dad's and get a bottle jack, but Mrs. keeps one in the frickin' car until she bloody buggers off. Now we're running up down to one car again. Um, so that keeps buggering me up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that piece of angle on and get a block. Maybe a bit of four by four or four by two, if I can get something that's a half decent length. Cut a slot in it just so I can sit the bit of angle on in. Push it up underneath the roof and jack it up until we get some pressure on. And then just try and hammer. Let's see if I can get it like in here and push up and try and hammer this down so I can get some of these dents out of it. And then maybe I can come in here with a spoon or something like that. Um, and work on this back piece while I've still got some pressure on here and see if I can get slightly work some of the worst of the dents out. I'm not going to worry, fuck, obviously we've got to cut this out and fix this, but I want to try and get these ones sitting right first, and then when I do these patches, hopefully we can keep it nice and cool, and uh, obviously I'll have a, I'll probably have a bucket up here with some cold water in my ear gun and all this stuff, and as we Depending on whether I just weld some small patches in here and then just try and fill these holes and just try and keep it as cool as possible. Well, I don't, I'm not 100% sure yet. Or well, I may just cut a slightly bigger patch. I don't really want to cut way out here if I can avoid it. I'd rather just see if we can zap these holes up, just punch the rest of the rivets out and just slowly just zap them up and just knock them down. Because it's actually pretty decent shape there. Well, it's a little bit funny, but but it's not too bad. You now, if we skim a filler across here, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not too badly out of shape, but it's got a bit of a wow there. It might be a wee bit funny there, but here, yeah, we've got a bit of work to do back here too. It's got some big, like, flats in it from the normal shape. We'll work on that later, but I want to try and get all these main ribs sitting right the um, best we can. I like we'll, keep, we'll keep hop down, we'll have a look. Um, because it's not shiny, it makes it a wee bit harder to see where they are. But you can you can see when you get down low, there's lots of funny spots. And also want to obviously have a go at jacking a couple of centre ribs up. And then we'll just have to dig out a block. Make sure that piece there might work. So there's one of the bits that head across here. We might just have a quick measure and just see what we need. Um, because I don't want to have to lift this too far, but if I've, you know, if I've got about three or four inches, just a bit of slack or something like that, and we can jack it up so we can get a little bit of half decent lift. But I want to also um, probably put that block underneath that centre brace, and we'll probably even do the front one. It looks like it's been pushed down a little bit too, if I can get onto it, um, and just put a little bit of lift. Um, but you're always going to get a bottle jack off Dad as well, but. We might look at that tomorrow now. Oh, see if I'm going to pick it up later. I was going to go do it this morning, but just 
Oh, it's been a pain in the butt. She's, um, Rachel's just had so much she's got to run around and do and sort out and people that she wants to frickin' see and just last little minute, minute things it just keeps friggin' everything up. <laughs> I just can't get chances to do things and because the little fellow's, young fellow's not at home now and it's faster for her to do stuff without him and all this stuff because he's, well, he's like mildly autistic, ADHD sort of, I don't know what do you want to call it. Magnetic hands are good, but <laughs> pain as well. So what do we need for up here? And turn on tight. Just want to get a rough one here. Let me oh, stop twisting around. One-handed life. What do we want? Eleven hundred. Yeah, eleven hundred loop. We'll cut a bit off. 1100. I was going to use that big long bar, but then I forgot there's the middle braces. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a look. I might use this, I might find see if I can find something else. Just doesn't have to be a perfect stick, does it? But it'll do. And we'll cut a slot in it. Um, there's a table saw that's there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, we'll see if we can cut a piece off and carry on. Righty, so show you what's going on here. So, we've just got the normal trolley jack, a bit of 4x2 with a slot cut in it, um, and then a bit of I think it's about 50mm or 50mm um, angle iron or 2 inch roughly. Um, it's pretty pretty thick, it's like a quarter inch thick, so it's plenty strong. So, I've just put a bit of pressure on here. I'll probably go up underneath there later, um, but yeah, we'll just tap a few of those dents out of along that edge of that rib, and then we'll just check each one individually as we go across. Obviously, we'll do the next section as well, and then we'll try and see what we can do with. Um, like you can see along this roof edge, there's a few. Like there's a dent. Oh, oh, yeah, ding in there. And then I think yeah, in here it's all flattened off. So it's, got, it's got quite a crown in this piece, there's even dints in there too, but so what we'll do is we'll go and we'll try and make that as, as good as we can. Um, as long as we can get it reasonably decent, we might have to, um, basically, when we get that scuffed hard back, um, as long as we can get it reasonable, we, we might have to just slick a bit of mud across the back. No, as long as we can get it within decent shape, and obviously the same along here, there's lots of pies and dints where people have stood but we'll try and get the reason as reasonably good as we can for a start off and then we'll get the patches fixed and obviously at some point we'll rip into it with the uh, DA um, and uh, what do we got we got a few of these left we got a few of those left you might. I don't particularly like this brand. The stuff is the tape is okay. I don't know. I just haven't had much success with this stuff. It's it's one of the sort of like the the brands that the guys are getting the paint from, a paint gear from, like sanding gear and paint gear, and that's sort of their lower end stuff. I thought you know it's like one of those things you give it a try, but that was also that same brand of that. Um, rattle can primer that I tried to use on the car and it just turned to shit on me. Um, I've got these as well, but these are 80s, um, which I'll probably use for the majority of it, but I think for that roof, um, I might get some different, I might bring up an order actually, some different ones. Um, I might even get some 3Ms like 60 grits or something like that that I can frickin' tear into that roof and even the rest of the body and just use those where I need to. Like the, the 80s are quite good as well, you know, if we have to do a, a little bit of filler work and just want to knock it off a little bit or whatever. Um, I really like that net, but it doesn't particularly like steel. It's good on when you're sanding filler and high build, but if you're 
sort of at that stage where you can hit steel or you're working with steel a little bit it blunts off it's still very good but it's just it doesn't quite like if you hit bare, bare metal it sort of it dulls off real quick but everything else if you're just sanding paint or trying to smooth something out or you've got a few coats of high build on you want to block something out it's absolutely freaking awesome now we'll jump up and we'll set the tripod up and uh, we'll just see if we can start knocking out some of these dents and see if we can get it to just everything to sit up level and you know eventually I don't know might move that platform around here and stand at the back or shove the van forward or whatever and we'll see if we can hammer out a bit at the back but we'll see if we can get these ribs right first
Right, we're getting somewhere. So managed to get this one to stay up with a couple of little shrinks and then obviously used that spoon and this spoon. Um, used that jack with the angle on underneath here and then I've pushed that brace up that's actually in the middle of that piece there which we'll get off shortly. So I've jacked that brace up. I've figured out that it's actually broken the spot, three or four spot wells that holds the brace to this piece. That's why it was... Um, it's obviously let go when whenever somebody was standing on probably on the roof of it. Um, so it broke those spot wells, which has let that all come down. I've still had to jack the front piece up. Um, but we're looking good so far, so I'll quickly jump back down and we'll show you where we're at. And then what I think I'll do is I'll probably move around here. Um, I'll have a bit of a feel down here yet too, but I think, I don't think there's too many others. Bad spots down this side. I think we'll try and get the back and the, um, the other side done. Oh, there's another, there's another dent in there, which may come when we lift that bit of roof. So I might just leave it in the meantime. It feels good from here back to here anyway. But this is good enough now that a, you know, hopefully a quick scrape of filler or few coats of hardboard and block it out and just see where it sits if you know what I mean. Um, you know we're probably going to have to go and back and deal with it with this anyway and obviously deal with it that so but at this point we're reasonable um, it needs a wee bit of work it needs a wee bit of work in here but we'll might better stick that back underneath there and when we jack that it might come back to us but I think we need to get over this side and work in the back here and there We'll jump down, we'll show you what we did on the inside anyway. Right, so when I was using those two body spoons together, hanging across where I'd hit, I had that there sitting through about the middle of here, which helped just keep things level. And then obviously we started jacking on this, so we got this back up reasonable. You know, whether it's correct shape or not, it looks a bit flatter there than it does over here. But um, oh, you can see, I don't know if you can see, I put three tech screws in there. Just to hold that back in position. Um, so yeah, I think when it had been stood on and collapsed, it broke those spot welds. But now I might see if we can attack this back bit, or maybe maybe I'll, maybe I'll take this side first, so it's like so we can get it flat like the other one, and then we'll come back to this rear piece. Possibly, we'll see. Might just set ourselves up around this other side of it and uh, push it forward so I can get that thing out of the road get that back around here I don't know. yeah no I haven't got enough room to get it around there but if I push this forward way forward and then just push it back again it'll be right um, yeah we'll tack this side and see if we can get that bit to flatten off and then we can maybe do a little bit with the back and see if we can get this back bit right Right, let's see. I'm just going to put the jack underneath the side again, sit it in the, at the centre of this. So we're going to get this all to push up, and then where it's been, I'd say creased, it's not really creased, but where it's been sort of buckled here, um, we'll do the same trick with that, with the two spoons, one on top, one on the bottom, and see if we can get everything to lay flat. Um, We've got a couple of bits up here to, to try and sort too, but we'll see if we can get that to play ball. That might sort of come right. And then we might just have a wee jacket that front and brace if we can get in there. And then we'll start playing with the back piece.
try. So if you're wondering, we've got that other side pretty good. Um, you know, we'll obviously work down the, towards the front and we'll check the, around the front as well. But the roof's pretty stable now. Um, we've got a few dints and hollows and whatever here. So again, we've got our hunk of angle iron underneath from about here to here, pushing up across here because it's there's a lot of funny dints and whatever. As long as we can get it again, again reasonable, um, get the worst of it out, you know, we can we scooch a puller and block it out, run across it with the DA and then hit it with a with a uh, long block. Yeah, you know, as long as it's decent. Um, you know, um, I think it'll be it'll be fine. You know, we'll still do the repairs, so we'll have to um, come back to a few bits in the areas. We're going to obviously have to do a bit more work, hammering and dolling once we've got it. Um, the repairs were in, but it's nice to get the dents out of it first. Um, so yeah, and then obviously get the sh roof into the right shape before we cut pieces to put in here um, and fill the holes and from all these friggin' rivets. Oh, that piece is bad. There's a lot of holes in it. But anyway, we will, I just wanna just even this out and see if we can get some of the worst of this frickin' dents out of it. Some of the worst of it. Um, well, this frickin', whatever this paint is on here, it's like, Bloody house paint or something. It's fucking terrible on the roof. <laughs> it is terrible. Can't see the worst of the high bits are. Fuck, I can feel it, but I can really see what the horror bits are. I can. I'm going to move things around a little bit. So what I'm doing is the, the ledge underneath here, what goes underneath, I'm putting that against that bottom piece, putting this dolly in there, pushing it up so where the panel steel comes up and pushing that up so I can hit the um, bits where it's been buckled in and that's pushed that out, hammering it back down to get this to sit solid again. There's lots of low spots in here, so I'm trying to hammer these down and push them up at the same time. Just trying to work my way around the roof. It's the back edge. So I've got the dolly in about here somewhere, but I'm hammering here.
Alrighty, we're getting somewhere. We're this side of the roof, the back part up to about here is reasonable. It's pretty reasonable. It's holding its shape. Like we got a little bit of a, but even over here, it's it's pretty solid again. Like you got to push on it pretty hard. So, like it needs a little bit more finessing, but it, we're getting close to shape. Hopefully, maybe we can um, once I sort of get the rest of it sort of sorted. I might better come along with that spoon and the um, other one and just run across some of these pieces and just try and even it out a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm not going to get super fussy, but because we'll just, we'll pro probably just spread the back of it with a wee bit of mud. Just just a thin coat. To be honest, down the ribs, I'm probably not going to worry too much. Um, it'll just be mainly around the sides. And as long as the centre's pretty reasonable, you know, where we've done the repairs and whatever, um, We'll leave it like it's pretty good now. Like it's not bad, bad if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll still we got a, a bit of shape to get back in it here. Need to work around this a bit. Now we've got a high spot in here. We've actually that's actually not bad that one now. Um, yeah, that one's not too bad. It needs a little bit more work. There's a couple. I might have to come and do a, a couple small shrinks, but it's actually not that bad. Not as bad as it was. Um, you know, for what it is, once we've de aged everything up, you know, we'll just put a spur, a bit of mud in there. Just, you know, it'll be a, I don't know, a sixteenth, just to freaking even it up a wee bit. Because if you painted it like this, without putting any filler on here, especially something where you're going to, you can sort of see the edge of it, you know what I mean? Like, a foot in, it's not going to be quite so critical, or a foot and a half in, um, unless you're standing up higher on a ladder or something like that, or above it. But as long as we can get it look pretty decent around the sides, um, and whatever, it'll be it'll be pretty not pretty nice. But yeah, we just need to work on this a bit more. So yeah, like as I said, I'm basically putting this here up underneath this this piece here with that dolly on it like that, pushing up, pushing up the the low, hammering around on the highs. That's why I sort of gave it a bit of a sand before, so I could sort of get a bit more of a, an idea of where some of the high spots were, so I could work them down, like I can feel them, but you know, if you get a bit of an indication, it just does make life a little easier, and then obviously you can, you can come back and do another bit more, more sand and just see where they've shifted. Um, but yeah, just pushing hard up on the on these low spots and hammering the highs down around it, and then sort of coming into so you come into the low spot and try and hammer um, sort of flatten it out I guess you'd call it and hopefully you know we'll get it pretty solid it doesn't you know it doesn't want to move too much you know we got a little bit of where it was we got a little bit of bouncy in here but it's a little bit more plain we'll get it um, yeah as long as it's back solid like it was you know you, you guys used to see me yesterday we were pushing the roof and it just would collapse but it's not like that now. Um, we've still got that bolt to get out of the centre. Must have had like an aerial or something on there, I'd say, or I don't know. Had something on there. I need to get off this ladder. My legs are freaking killing me. But I pushed that front brace up earlier on too, before I sort of... Um, when I went back in there at one stage, I pushed that up um, to make the roof sort of move a bit better. Um, but yeah. And I think what I'll do with these pieces, I might actually bend up a couple small bits of um we want to call it just a couple of bits of angle just out of some sheet metal just out of a couple of scraps and i might um where i'm going to weld these in i might just well obviously where some of these holes are i might just bang a couple of tech screws up so it just pulls up tight and then i can sit in a panel on top it's got a shape and that'll just help stop it from buckling too um if i can do that um, you know, even a couple of three spots or whatever I, I do, like it's not hard to, you know, if I'm going to be filling these holes anyway, like it's, if I try and utilise one of them um, and just put a couple of pieces there and just obviously cool as we go, but that'll just help it stop it from moving too much. And we'll definitely do that up there as well. Once we actually cut that um, lip off up there, cut that hole open and cut that lip off, that roof will actually get some better shape in it too. It's a bit wonky there, but I think it'll come around. It'll pop up, I think, once we... Because they've bent that edge up. They've opened it up and then just bent that edge up. It's, 
lost its shape there, but once we get rid of that, it should be pretty good. But you can see down through there, <laughs> the shape's not bad now. You know, considering it was all buckled in and dinted in and whatever. You know, we're, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. I'm pretty, pretty happy with the bloody progress. It's coming around not too bad. Um, not that I want to be spending hours and hours and hours up here, but I think just the DA and uh, a smear filler where we have to and just knock it back and didn't then just hit it with a long board, um, you know, and just tidy it up. I think that's all it'll need, you know, and the sides will be the same except for, you know, the odd bit, um, you know, that piece here, you know, we'll just better do the same. The rest of it I think we'll get away with. You know, um, obviously we'll have to wait to see what we find in here in case there's anything weird. But the old girl's pretty freaking straight. It feels actually pretty bloody straight. I think by the time we give it a bloody good scuff up, just tear into this primer a bit, get that off, or well, the majority of it off, or cut through it at least, and make sure that's solid. Um, and give us a decent frickin' um, bite to get some some good primer on it. Yeah, because I don't even know what that is, so I'll you know, we'll try and get the majority of it off. But it doesn't sound like it's that thick. It's obviously just had a bit of filler put in there, obviously for a couple of knocks and dents, or maybe it's had a couple of repairs or something like that. I don't really know, but I don't see anything greatly nasty on the inside, if you know what I mean. Well, it's pretty reasonable in there. Yeah, don't know. It's had a, some of these look almost looks like they've circled a few dints and they've just knocked, flattened it off and smeared a bit of mud on there. But yeah, it's actually probably not going to take, it's probably not going to be too bad actually. It's not going to be too bad. Like the worst of it's going to be doing these patches, doing the windows and stuff like that. and getting that right but again I might even do the same um it shouldn't be too bad but I might I might brace that piece up bend a weave and screw one of those longer bits of angle iron on there just so it doesn't move just down below where I'm going to be welding just to help stop distortion and even maybe up here bend up a couple of light bits just where we're sort of going to be overlapping just till we get it reasonable reasonably freaking Weld it up, but yeah, should be right. Should be right. I actually wonder if I could maybe, I don't know, with those windows, maybe I could trace the pattern of them, and maybe put a bead around it or something like that, and then weld it in. I don't know. We'll we'll cross that bridge later. That's a that's a big hole to fill. But anyway, I'm gonna have a break for five, and then we'll carry on. Right, morning trips. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning, so you can see how dark it is here in the middle of winter. It's just starting to break daylight. Now, um, basically 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a little bit after. Um, so, yeah, just down here I've got some new sanding discs. Got some new sanding discs for the DA, actually. I might grab my welder. I grab that and drag that a bit closer. I don't actually know how much gas I've got left, but um, what I've actually been meaning to do is go grab Dad's little bottle, because I know it's empty. Um, I did have two bottles here at one point. I had a big bottle and a little bottle, um, but what we ended up doing is, because um, we had the little bottle on rent, and then Core Gas um, had supplied me with a big bottle, um, for um, some sponsorship for a wee while, but they pulled that away from me. But what they what they did is they, for no extra cost, they swapped the big bottle into the into the system as the rental. Um, just the yeah, unfortunately, I wouldn't say I lost it, but it's just the people that were doing it um, had that thing had left the book had left the um, company. So I sort of lost that, I guess you would call it, connection. So yeah, unfortunately I don't, I'm not sponsored by Core Gas anymore. But hey, it was good. Like I managed to get a, I don't know, 
probably three or four free bottles at the moment. Period of time, which is it's always a saving. But yeah, Dad's still got a small bottle, so the likelihood of Dad using it. So what I might do is um, at some point grab his little bottle, go fill it. And this one's getting empty as well, getting close to empty, and fill this one possibly at the same time because I'm going to need it. Um, so at least if, even if I get some patches tacked in the roof and I run out, well, I can go get the bottles filled up um, at some point. Next few days. Um, so yeah, if that happens, what I'll do is I'll just hook into the um, paint and get that ripped back. So I've been using just um, these. I think I showed that the other day. So I just was talking to the paint guys yesterday and um, biggest problem, if I go 3M uh, the boxes are only 25 pads in a box um, I've probably got, what have I got left here uh, what would it be 10 or a dozen, maybe a couple of extras in, that, in there, but there's normally um, it's 50 in these boxes and they're about the same cost, <laughs> roughly, give or take. There's a few dollars in it, but, you know, like, it's roughly, it's, the three in ones are about double the price. But, so, what they've done is, instead of getting those ones, I'm not 100% sure on the price difference, I'll have to suss that out. Um, but I just said, I wasn't particularly happy with the, um, the ones I've been using. Like, they were right, but um, they're blunting off. A bit fast for my liking, if you know what I mean. But you don't want to be changing them all really quickly. So you see, we've actually got some um, ceramic grit ones. Um, and said apparently, they last a bit longer. Um, unfortunately, the guys don't really use them. You know, like the manager does. He he um, obviously, but you can't always get to talk to him to get his idea. So. What we've got is, instead of the red ones, we've got these ones. So we'll give them a, a whirl, so they're the same grit, but yeah, the premium ceramic instead of just the premiums. Um, I'll turn the camera around, hold on. So yeah, these are these ones. So it's the, and this is these ones. So, I presume it's the part number. So yeah, these are just the premiums with the red discs. So yeah, we'll try these and see if these last, see if these last a bit longer. So I'll do a, com I'll do a comparison on here or on the roof or something like that at some point in the next day or two. Um, but yeah, so what I want to do is I want to finish hammering out the back of that roof and we'll have a quick squiz around the front. So I might drag the ladder actually around the front and just have a wee nosy before I sort of get going and just see if there is much damage up around the front. And then, then I would um, maybe start cutting the patches out of the roof that I want to cut and get some patches cut to fit. Um, just, I don't know, have I got any, let's see if we've got any half decent bits of scrap here. Just pull that cord a bit. See if I've got any smaller. Smaller, biggest bits. It's 1.6. It's a bit of 0.8 that I've freaking frigged up a skin. I just thought I'll keep that. It might be handy for just a couple of small patches for something, but I'll use one mil. Yeah, that's two mil. Yeah, no, I don't have anything half decent there. I don't think. Just little bits. Yeah, there's nothing decent in there. Just a few little scraps and bits and pieces from making little, you know, you might have to like make a little frickin' filler for something. Um, what's this? Hold on. It's that. That's heavy too, you know. That feels heavier than one mil. I'll check that. It might be 1.6, but all feels of that. Um, I'll double check that for thickness, because that might do for some bits for that roof. I'll check that thickness. Verniers are in toolbox. So I'll quickly check that. 
and then we can start making up some patches as well. Yeah, so it's 1.6. So it's a bit of a pain, but it's alright. We'll use it for something else. Um, do I have a pen handy? Just let's see if I got a pen handy. Just so I can write on it. Turn the lines. It's a bit out of markers. And then I think we'll have one over in the toolbox. So at least now I know that's 1.6 or um that's equivalent to 16 gauge if you're wondering. Um, I'm used to working in millimetres, but I know what the rough conversion is. Um, that's like 22, 23 gauge. Two mil is um, it's like what's two mil? Um, like 14 gauge, I think it is roughly. Without looking it up, I do have a. I've got a chart on my phone if I need to work it out. So, yeah. but I've, got, I've got plenty of one mil, which is 19 gauge. I've got a whole full sheet over here. I just, I just thought if I'd fair a couple of bits of scrap, you know, just say it's cutting up, cutting into the sheet, or dragging the sheet out. <laughs> I put it away the other day, I should have left it out. So, yeah, I've got this whole, whole sheet except for the bit that I cut out of it the other day. But we'll be using this anyway. I'll we'll double check actually the thickness of this. Where will we look? Window opening's here handy. That'll let me know what the bulk of it is. So it's about 1.3, 1.2, somewhere around about there. So if you take the paint off it, it's 1mm. So that's cool. So yeah, I've got plenty of that 1mm sheet. So we'll use that to obviously fill these windows and whatever. I'll make a... Uh, when we do these windows, I'll get a rough dimension of them and uh, we'll cut a couple of pieces and we'll just slip it in from behind and then we'll obviously draw around and we'll let our, allow a little extra for these shitty edges um, and whatever. And we'll get them in there. He actually said he didn't mind if I actually deleted this, but I'll try and keep that in there. It's a wee bit extra strength. In the panel just to help get stronger um, so yeah but anyway we will we'll jump up we'll, I'll drag the ladder around the front level we look up there and then um, we will carry on with knocking dents out and then yeah we might make some patches at least attack them in <laughs>
Right, so yeah, I just I just decided that those ceramic pads actually work all right. Um, yeah, they definitely don't dull off as easy as those red ones, but they just don't, whatever that white paint is, it's garbage. Um, and I think it's going to take longer to sand it off than what it is to strip the majority of the paint off. There's a little bit of blue, a little bit of primer left on there underneath, and we can just run out with the DA. Then by the time we're, you know, blowing a few coats of primer on it, that's not going to matter much. I think that's just the best way to attack the roof. I think the rest of it will be okay. The outside of it, you know, we'll just, as I said, we'll just DA it. It's the original paint, it'll be fine. Um, it looks, it appears to be in decent shape within reason, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, we'll get the worst that primer off and whatever. We'll see how that sands off. You know, we might do the same with the odd panel. We'll just see how it goes, obviously. But I think yeah, the roof just, it really needs stripped to get that, whatever that crappy white paint is. I think it's been painted blue and it's had a white roof factory but somebody's painted something else over top and it's just a bitch to get off. It just, all it wants to do is clog paper. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it just, it'll be a damn sort easy just to, it's just as easy and just as fast, to be honest. Um, just strip it off. You know, we'll use probably a couple of three strip discs and just tear it off and then we can kind of start fresh with the roof at least. You know, we flick a quick coat of etch over it or whatever. I don't like, especially in the winter months, I don't like putting body filler on best deal. I know you can, like a lot of it's direct to metal, but I just find when the panels are a bit cooler, if you put um, uh, body filler over direct to metal um, in the cooler months, it doesn't hurt to have a quick white coat of etch on it. It just stops that sweat between the two and then you get a few days later when it's um, the body filler has sweated against the steel when you get that rust and it bust, breaks off the body filler. I know the, the newer products are better, but you know sometimes a little bit of old school <laughs> Goes a long way. Like I've seen a lot of people, um, you know, they just, they say, oh, you know, yeah, you can just put it direct to metal, direct to metal, direct to metal. You know, yeah, that's all good, well and good. But you know that, you know, even 20 years ago, like I've had it happen. You know, you clean a panel up, whatever. You know, products is direct to metal, put it on, and then four or five, ten years later, it's starting to crack off because it, the direct to metal hasn't worked. You know, it's been done in a cooler month and the panel was cold and it's sweated. Um, you know, it's created sweat between the two layers and, uh, you know, it's eventually rusted and then broken that piece off or it's just come loose, you know, and then driving down the road rattling and whatever, you know, and you've got this bit of body filler, you know, in a, in a mark or a dent or whatever, you know, or if it's obviously had a, a bit much put on there, you know, the panel hasn't been worked out good enough, it cracks, breaks, flexes and falls off and it's all rusty and sweaty underneath if you know what I mean so yeah it's one of those things like I if you're I think if you're in a controlled environment it probably wouldn't matter but when you're working just in an open like a shed like this and like I'm not worried about heat today it's cool but it's not that cold it's starting to warm up now now that I'm getting into it but yeah a little wee bit of body filler it just doesn't hurt to you know, coat it, it's, it's, it's simple enough to put on. You can just give it a light rub um, with a bit of 80 grit by hand. For a start off, give it a blow down, give it a wipe down, put your body filler on. And, and the least thing you know, that's not going to sweat in between. You might have scratched the surface in a few spots. It's not going to affect that so much, but you know what I mean? It just, it's a little bit of peace of mind, you know, that, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, yeah. I think, you know, you get in a lot of places and it's not a problem temperature wise but when you're in those cooler areas especially in winter um, or if it's a really cold day and you put your hand on the middle and you think oh it's a bit cold fucking quick coat edge you know let it dry for a wee while put your body filler on there you go anyway I'll work a few more of the dents out in this corner um, and uh, yeah 
Like eventually I'm going to have to go around and clean this off properly. I'll, I'll turn you around. I've got to go around here and clean all this off around the edges properly and we'll give it a bit more of a clean up. But I just wanted to get the bulk of it off and just see whether it's going to be faster to just strip it off and it is. Oh, what I'll do is I'll run around here with a wire wheel and when I put a fresh disc on, um, you know, we'll whip around and get in the edges a bit better and run up and down the ribs and whatever, um, you know, eventually. You know, and a wire wheel and whatever. I'll have to go get some more discs. Of a, that's why I'm just trying to use the ends of what I've got. Um, you know, I've got a couple extras over there that I've cut back, I think, that'll you know, I'll run on the roof as well, just to get the, you know, help get the bulk of it off. And if I only have to buy one more new one to, you know, we'll use one more new one to get down the ribs and whatever and down these edges to get them really cleaned up. And then a while we'll, well, it just, just saves because they're, you know, they're not terribly cheap. Um, I find this brand is really good. Um, some of the other like 3M ones and that are really expensive. These here are I think about $13 or $14 here in New Zealand um, from where I got them from. Um, whereas some of them, you know, they, they can be 20 or 30 bucks. So, you know, I can buy two or three for the price of one or close to two or three, you know. Close to three for the price of one in most cases, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, depending on where you, where you get them from. But, you know, if you hunt around and you are in New Zealand, those are reasonably priced. Well, where I got them from anyway. So you just hunt around. You might find those. They're nice and solid. They seem to be they're heavier than the 3M ones too that I've used. The 3M seem to be a bit um, they're, they're a bit softer in the construction. These are a bit stiffer, a bit more solid. So yeah, I don't know. They seem to last good too. So you know, we'll like a few more dents out around here and carry on. So we've got these bits underneath here just to help stop things from moving around. Just going to do a little bit of clean up in this. I'll bring the uh, right angle die grind up here with a Rolox. We'll just get this to fit. I might just, um, just, just manipulate a little bit more shape in that. We'll obviously give this a clean up and then we'll start tacking it in. And... Um, Crank out the weld and see if we can just at least get it started anyway. I'm just not sure how much gas is left in that thing. I need to go get another gas bottle. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, just see if we can get it to sit in place and tack it in.
Wood here, John. Right, so I got that sorted, so that's on the other video that I've been trying to get enough footage for and hopefully that's gone now, I'm just waiting on the lady to get back to me, so we'll dive back into this, we'll jump back up into the roof, we'll finish that patch up on the roof and then we'll obviously we'll go forward and we'll cut that other one out and whatever like that, so we'll dive back into this now that we've spent, oh, I don't know, another hour or two freaking on this thing, uh, mucking around, I just, um, if you haven't watched the other video, well, they'll be, yeah, depending on how, which way they fall with the first one of this and then the first, or the last one of this, um, with mucking around with the brakes and stuff. Yeah, a couple of small issues, the, um, the hazard light switch, um, if you turn that on, or I presume it's on, none of the, um, indicators, blinkers, turn signals work, uh, and it's got intermittent earth issues on the back, on the tail lights, it really needs the sockets changed over to like the more modern ones with the two wires to get rid of that common body earth and actually wire some proper earths into it and then do a decent ground um maybe back through the body but at least it's got a wire instead of trying to rely on those freaking sockets um well you know it can be it'll work through both instead of just through the you know what i mean um get rid of that problem um it needs a few things like that yeah and it needs that the heater switch um does work but it only works on one speed um so i don't know whether it's the switch whether it's the heater motor or whether it's the um whether it's, it, it's obviously got a, it should have a two speed resistor i think from just by it's got three positions on the switch so one will be off and the other one will be you know blowing high i guess so it only seems to work on full speed, as from what I can guess, unless it goes faster. Um, but yeah, the wiring's too short. Somebody's been playing with the wiring. Um, it's had some shit added into it, or mucked around with it. It's, it's got a, one of those what, crimp connector bits and pieces underneath the dash. So the wires, you can't poke it through the hole to plug it in. Um, it's too short, it needs to be fucking, I don't know, another two inches long would be handy, because it would be better hang them out through the wiring so it needs that sorted it needs that whatever that what she was wrong with the hazard switch that so probably might have a bad earth somewhere or it's got a it's grounding out or something um yeah and there's a couple of other little issues i need a windscreen washer um squirter replaced um because it's blowing out they've got like a little plastic cup and it's got like a little st steel ball with a with a squirter nozzle on it so you can direct it well they obviously the plastic rots away and then they pop out um but you can buy them so yeah, i'll just see what she says well, she would whether she wants me to frig with that stuff i'm hoping that she doesn't and she might take it to a proper auto sparky i sort of suggested it might be better off to go to an auto, auto sparky that with a bit of knowledge on some of this older stuff to suss out those few little bit of wiring issues and maybe put a third brake light in it and then it can be sent for a safety check um yeah, everything else seems to be all right. The brakes are average-ish. They're all right, but I don't know. I, I think I thought they would be better. They would seem to be reasonable, but I don't know whether, you know, it's not to say there's not a possibly a problem with the booster or anything like that. It seems they work okay, if you know what I mean, but I don't know. It, that, nothing can be with modern brakes, so. But they are twin pot front calipers on a steel prop, on a solid disc, because they should work all right, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah I don't know the safety check will t tell us whether there's any other issues there if you know what I mean but 
here. Oh, hopefully it's out of my hands now. So anyway, we'll get up on the roof. We'll get that last that bit welded up. Um, we'll get up there and throw me um, airline and everything back up there and a light and whatever, and we'll throw the helmet on and we'll weld all the rest of that shit up and um, get that cleaned up. And by that stage, it'll probably be lunchtime, I reckon, and then see if we can get into uh, maybe that front patch, get that sorted. these holes were added up before lunch now they've found me out the glove hold me a bit of copper underneath the holes you get the worst of them anyway I'm gonna put a smear glass filler over this just because there's so many fucking holes because <laughs> I'm bound to not get everything 100% but I think I've got 90% of it closed up and then just Scooch a frickin' glass full of over top. 
just to make sure it's sealed. Righty, so shortly, once I've done a little bit more work here and knocked in a few little welds, I'll mix up a bit of that short strand glass filler and we'll put on this patch in the roof and cover over all these um, screw holes that we've filled. Obviously, we'll give it a grind on the back as well. But yeah, just there's a few little holes I want to do and I'll, want, I'll, just, I'll give it a, a final dolly. I think they're pretty good. I don't think it's clapped anymore or anywhere. I might just give it another wee push with a steel bar behind it. Just give it a bit more dolly in here. Just where I've, where I've welded, obviously it shrinks a little bit. We'll give it a final wee dolly and then and a clean up. We'll give it a good DA. I'll flick a bit of that itch just on this area in the meantime. And uh, I'll, actually I'll probably... Um, Throw one of those discs on here, and give this a bit more of a clean up, just to get a bit further away so I can get into these pieces and then we'll just smear over that glass filler over here, just make sure that it gets into here. I don't want it thick or anything, but we'll just use it to make sure we've got no pinholes and especially all these freaking holes from rivets and shit. Um, and that'll be good then. Um, I might even better just whip it back with this or a fresh one. Just in this area and just give it a good run over. But we'll just fill just a few more pins, holes, the worst of them anyway that we can find and see. I've got the worst of these stuff around here, I think. There's so many freaking holes it's hard to tell. But we'll just have a good look and we'll just make sure we're picking anything else up. I might shine a light underneath. Yeah, we'll put a light up from underneath and just that'll give us a bit more of an idea, just any bad ones we've missed. And everything else we just get with that. Look, we've got the worst of it. It's not as though we're just smearing mud over it, trying to fill big holes. Um, you know, we've done the beer, done a reasonable job. A little bit of glass filler, it'll be fine, and then just the ninety percent of it will be knocked off. Maybe a smear body filler over freaking this whole back area anyway. So and down here, and probably the, I don't know. We'll see with how the rest of it goes. Like we're not, like I said, we're not going to make it. Laser straight pretty, but it will make it so it's decent um, because we've got a bit of work to do in the front yet. And we've obviously got to fill that and fill those and whatever. Um, that's actually one thing I've seen today. I was just watching a video before, um, I'm not sure how long the video has been up, not very long, but um, it's one thing I've been looking for for a while. And um, those hole punch tools. I've got one that's got the flange on it, but they're very, very, very shallow. They're, I wouldn't say they're useless, but they're very limited because you can't get in very deep. I've always said um, they, somebody needs to make a deeper one, like if it was an inch deep or an inch and a half deep sort of type variation of that would be really good. Um, this one that, I, that I've seen, um, and it's the only video that I've ever seen, and I just, I actually Google, I I took, basically I took the um, guy's um, information off his video and um, put it into uh, YouTube, but minus his part of it, just like that big deep hole punch thing that he was found um, that was on Amazon. There's two, two that I've seen, and there's a couple of variations in each model. 
Um, but yeah, it's a really deep one. It's shit. It's like a, a good, oh, it'll be a foot deep. I'm guessing, give or take. It might be a little bit deeper than that. It mightn't be quite that deep, but it's it'd be freaking eight or nine inches deep, at least. It might be a foot deep. Um, but yeah, it's. It looks like it comes in several different size punches as well. The one he had, hard to tell. Um, it looked like it was about 10 mil 3.8s, but it mightn't been quite that big. It might have been 8 mil 5.16. Um, I think the one I've got here is it's either 5 or 6 mil. Actually, I'll go grab it. Um, but this one here is like a really big, deep flange. Um, hole punch for doing round flanges and stuff like that and he said the exact same thing the ones that you've been able to get for years like this are very very limited because that hole punch is not very far in um, I've always said if you could have made one of these with a bigger deeper head in it um, would have been so much better to have a big deep thing on it um you know whether it was an inch or two inches in would be ideal for what we do but this one that he's had i'll turn the camera around um the, the, the only thing i can see with the ones that have got it's obviously made for heavy steel or heavy plate um or I mean heavy sheet metal but it's it's way bigger than that. It's more like um, it's more like that bigger size body, kind of almost like um, like the big heavy rattle guns that you used to be around. Um, uh, where's this big rattle gun? Um, not that it's that big either, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, hey, like this is one of the smaller Makita like a half inch impacts. You know, you get the big ones, like the big, more grunty ones. It's more that sort of dimension, big, huge body on it. It would be heavy to use, um, but yeah, it's got this big, this big, deep throat on it. Like it comes back. It, it would be, if it's not 12 inches, it's fucking close. It'd be 8 to 10. So, and you can, it's got a way bigger punch than this. Pretty sure this is, um, where's the part number on this one? I think this is 5 mil hole, and um, I'm not 100% sure. His would have been 8 or 10 mil. It's, it was a big freaking hole. It was at least, at least that size. It might have been bigger, um, which would be okay. Like, I think it's, that's, the one here might have been borderline too big, but I don't know. It's hard to tell, but it was putting big, massive holes in it. So it would be really good because you'd better freaking burn a good hot spot weld and, or, you know, that sort of type of thing. But you could put it in anywhere on the panel, you know, if you had to go way in on a panel for some particular reason around a weird corner or something like that, and then the panel went up and there was a couple of spot welds out there. So instead of drawing, you could just come along and just mark. It was actually quite good because you could see down where the um, punch was too. You could see, like, it had such a big hole in it. You could, like, mark where you wanted them and you could put it over top. Um, it was Chris from Junker Up, anyway. Chris Birdsong um, from Junker Up. He's put that video up today. Um, and he's got a couple of photos here at the end of it and whatever. But, yeah, it was off Amazon, but I, I'd had a bit of a Google around. And there's some on eBay and all that sort of thing too. But I think... It's, I think it's really good, but I think it's a bit overkill. It's a bit big and heavy. I think if you could get one that was a little bit more like that, but deeper, even if it had like a three or four inch throat on it, um, would be almost perfect for what we do. Because, yeah, nine times out of ten, like, that's not deep enough. But if you're making a couple of panels and want to spot weld them together or plug weld them together, that's quite good. But it does, it needs to be deeper. Um, I've, I've thought about <laughs> um, like cutting this back in. Like, if you could get the, that punch part of it out. But, like, I would cut that back in, you know what I mean? Like, to, if you could, back into that hole so you could get in there deeper. But it's, 
never been. They, it's a good thing, but it's not. They're not. They've been designed by somebody that doesn't do fucking body work, to be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. Anyway, we'll carry on up here. We'll get this cleaned up, tickled up, and uh, yeah, we'll clean this area up and blow it down, wipe it down, whatever. Flip a bit of that rattle can etch on it. And then we'll smear some glass filler on and um, be done with it. Right, so that's that bit repaired. All we're trying to do with this glass, fiberglass filler, short strand filler, is just squeeze it into the other panels and then obviously just give it a very light layer. 90% of this will come off again. Um, you know, it, that's the main main use for it. It's just, it's really handy over repairs. Maybe you've done, you know, put a few patches and, you know, obviously fill all those pipe rivet holes up. Um, yeah, and, you know, we'll ground it all down, whatever, clean it all up, flick a bit of etch on it, and then just squeeze that into whatever holes are left, if there's any, like, little fine pinholes or whatever. It just makes sure that it's sealed so the moisture cannot come back through to any body filler that we put over there later on. You know, we'll, we might give this a, a little final dolly around later on, whatever, when we're starting to do the last little checks and bits and pieces from looking across it and thinking oh, it's still a bit low somewhere like that we might give it a wee another wee push with a block and move it around and whatever you know because yeah, I've got a couple of bits and pieces I need to hammer down and whatever it's probably for me pushing on it with some with that bar and whatever I was still got to clean this up properly and shit but that repair is repaired you know, the holes repaired they're gone they ain't coming back you know we'll give it a, a final grind up on the inside and we'll probably just it's probably even might even smear a little bit of that underneath too and just sand it off and then i don't know if he just decides he wants to clean up the inside of it properly when he takes it away because i think he's going to drop the motor and box out of it because it is dropping all, all over the ground um 
So he's probably going to go through and do the seals and obviously probably make sure it's running better and all that sort of shit. Um, so if, and I think you got to drop that out there from underneath, um, I think, in these things. So, like, when he's doing that, he may want to go around the inside of it and give it a real good clean-up of all the um, foamy shit that's on the inside of it. I would suggest that to him to do that if he's watching. Um, get in with a big rotary wire brush and a grinder or something like that and just whip around all that shit and then we can um, probably not so much paint it on the inside except for where it needs it, obviously where it's seen, but we can probably put some under seal, some body dead in our under seal in a lot of those places and um, you know, we could probably do the roof too in the back. You know, that'll just help lessen the noise from there. Yeah, I don't know whether you want to put some maybe some some of that sort of insulation dynamat sort of type sort of stuff. I know there's a pair of that cheaper stuff around now in the old original dynamat or whatever. But it's freaking expensive, but there's some cheaper alternatives around, so you might want to put that on as well. But at least we'll we'll give that a good clean up and you know we'll we'll play with the grinder and whatever later on, just knock the last little bits and pieces and we'll probably put a bit of that shit on the inside too and then just quickly freaking just DA it flat. Doesn't have to be dead perfect, it's just we'll just knock it down so it's reasonable and then it can be covered and painted or whatever, you know. Slathered in something so it just seals it up. But anyway, we will move uh probably the van backwards because I can't really go that way. So we'll move the van back and um we'll chop that bit out and um then we'll make a patch of there and we'll start tacking that in.
Oh, that's that patch tacked in. So we're just gonna finish wilding that in now. So yeah, I just screwed those couple of bits over underneath. Just makes life a lot easier just trying to get things lined up. Especially with a patch like that in the middle of the roof. Just an easy way to hold it. Um, look, it's freaking easy enough to fill up those couple of holes. There's no worries from freaking doing that mess over there, so yeah. Just hold that spoon underneath it, zap them up as we're going around and should be a good one. We scooch your filler when we're finished and should be good. I put a little bit of shape in it, but yeah, we'll we'll hammer and dolly the whole thing around when we get close to it and we'll make sure it, it needs lifted there. It's got a bit of a low spot. But yeah, you can see where it's somebody st probably stood on it there or something like that, so that needs all worked, so by the time we'll finish, it'll be good. it'll be good. But that's definitely better than a big, ugly, freaking vent thing in the roof. So yeah, by the time I'm finished, nobody will know. Anyway, we will. I'm gonna have a break for five. Sit down, freaking, just relax for a minute because it's freaking awkward. It's just a little bit too high here, but it's 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 good. It's a good height, but it's a be nice if it could move up and down. <laughs> Need a, need a freaking scissor, we scissor freaking pallet, um, lift freaking trolley thing would be freaking handy because you could just, you could get to a right, sort of a half by right height, but it's not too bad kneeling down when you're doing sort of close stuff, but when you're trying to lean over to this other stuff, you'd, I'm just a little high. It'd be nice if it was just, I don't know, another foot lower, probably be perfect. But anyway, it is what it is. You make do. Anyway. So yeah, we might want to DA that off shortly too, but I'm not too worried about it. At the moment, it's not as there's a lot on there, so if it was on there a bit thicker than that, I would make sure I DA'd it off before it got too hard, but it'll be fine. It's bugging all in there, but yeah, we'll just might go around and just give it a wee hammer and dolly in. It's actually pretty good, oh, it needs lifted there. But yeah, everything else feels pretty good. We'll just lift that corner a little bit. It's a little low there, but I'm not too worried about it. Fill it for all it needs. Right, small update in this. So the um, lady just messaged me. So she wants me to sort the washers out. So I'll jump online and uh, see if I can find them. And she also wants me to get another um, light and put on the back. So I'll do that. Um, I'll see if I'm, that should be easy enough to sort out. And um, yeah, I'll just hunt for. I'll jump on line and have a good look, see if I can find somewhere to get these from. And I'll replace both. And we'll just, if we can get that one out without damaging it, she can keep that as a spear in case one ever falls a bit. But yeah, she'll be a good one. Alrighty, so yeah, that'll be here for a few more days. <laughs> Here's a shot from underneath to show you just all the holes that I filled. <laughs> There's a shitload of them. Obviously, I'll put an extra couple in there, but yeah, we'll just give that a quick grind off later on or whatever. But this is what I was saying about this, all this fluffy stuff. So maybe um, I think the owner, if he wants to, I think while we're on the grinder, we'll get rid of all that shit and then I'll do what I need to in here. Um, but yeah, I would try and get it all, the worst of it off anyway, and then we can spray um, some of that body deadener stuff in here. Um, same as what I've used underneath everything else, but it'll be quite good in that. Would would knock the um, the road noise down. Would help the stuff. I'd spray a whole pile of that in there. Get two with a couple of three lots of that and put because it just it takes all the noise out of it like I do it all, like I've done it all in here this is actually going for um upholstery shortly well in a couple of weeks but it's just it's not as hollow sounding if you know what I mean like it's if I tap on this like it's oh, it's similar I suppose it just it's not as noisy yeah I suppose it's similar yeah I don't know, you know what I mean? It just helps with, with, with road noise and insulation. But yeah, I would, if it was mine, 
which I actually wouldn't mind one of these. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't actually be a bad work vehicle with a uh, bit of a modern power plant. Um, wouldn't be a bad work vehicle, you know, sign ride it up, whatever. But um, yeah, I would um, line it out with that dynamat sort of type stuff and it would quiet it down heaps. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll carry on.